chance that the deans had put together, the senior fellows, all the curriculum chairs that you saw this morning, I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> this brings everything together. And then to see it this morning, and to see how you welcomed it, and then to hear part of that student panel, were you just like blown away? I have to tell you, I, I feel so fortunate every day that I'm one of those weird kind of people that wakes up happy. I sometimes don't stay happy, but I always wake up happy. <laughs> <laughs> anxious 
It is because you want to contribute and you want to do even better. You want to do even more. You want to continue to learn, continue to convey your knowledge to the students, and help them be better. Because after all, that's why we teach, right? You know, I still think I'm a faculty member. Just bear with me. I uh, think that's why we teach. Otherwise, the job would be too hard. Because you're certainly not getting rich on it, right? So that's what I see. And you put that with the facts that we were just talking about with what students need. And I know, I, I'm like, I am so excited about the future at Robert Morris University. As I reflect on the last year, and as we talked about this plan, experience-based learning, there were a couple of questions that happened over and over and over again that I thought I would just put up here. Several of you said to me I used the wrong verb in the long-range plan when I talked about exploding the ice. <laughs> <laughs> and I think you thought it was, you know, Shashank's physics experiment or something, and, you know, like, you know, plastic all over the walls or something. But what I mean is that we need to take it times 10. Maybe we don't even call it eye center. You know, we used to say uh, the restaurant, Erie restaurant, was the front porch of the eye center, right? We need to broaden our thinking and realize those kinds of things are eye center projects. We no longer have the restaurant. It lived its useful life and it was no longer the right thing for us to do. We never expected to make money off of it, and we certainly weren't, but it was more than that. The students really weren't getting the experience that we wanted them to get there. And I don't know if you've heard Shelly's announcement, but what we're moving to is a pop-up restaurant option. So keep your ears and eyes open. That is gonna be so cool because it gives the students the ability to take the content from start to finish. I guess they're even naming the pop-up every quarter. Shelly doesn't like their names this quarter. I kind of. But anyway, and it also allows them to order the product, to serve, to you know, uh, serve the people, to take the money, and to debrief. It's a better experience, and it'll happen on our campus, and it's something that we can showcase even better because it's happening right here. So more to come about that week four, I'm told. Mm -hmm. right. Something week about Thursday Tuesday week four. Right. Yeah. Thursday. So exploding the ice center. I was so pleased to hear our students talk about the ice center this morning and the way that they talked about it, which is like super, it's so darn cute. And then my favorite question, I think, Pat, it came from you, but I'll credit you for it, was does it have to be flashy? I do not, I don't know. You know what, it, it does. It has, to be it has to be noticeable. We have to be able to, to a certain extent, say this is what experience-based learning at Roberts University looks like. This is what the Chicago experience at Roberts University looks like. It'll look different. Culinary students, one of their many, will be the pop-up restaurants. Tom was just telling me some of his students are, are going to a conference in Detroit. I'm not doing it justice. It's a pretty good, pretty cool thing. That's something. You know, for other students, it's, it's something completely different. So it looks different for everybody, but we do need to make sure it's recognizable. And I think what I've seen coming through this group throughout this whole plan for the year is not only training ourselves or retraining ourselves, but making sure we're cataloging what we're doing so that it's not just hit or miss here and there. This is a package of what we're doing. It's so cool. So I'm going to use an analogy of gold shoes. <coughs> gold shoes by themselves, well, they might mean something. I'm not sure what they mean. Might mean, um, I don't know, a Cinderella costume for Halloween. Might mean a girl's had a good night, I'm sure. <laughs> but by themselves, they really mean very little, right? Um, Paul and, and Michael, you took your class right to, or whoever taught that class, I forget. Didn't you take me to Cubs game? Yes, yes. Well, that by itself doesn't mean anything except a field trip, right? I remember seeing a posting about a hot dog stand. That by itself is not, well, it's fun, but by itself it doesn't mean anything. It's just gold shoes on the floor. You don't know. But you put it with the bigger picture, and back to the diagram you used this morning with the DARA, right, which I thought was just awesome. Um, then you, you make a bigger thing out of it and you say, okay, what is reflection? What do students learn from it? How are we going to integrate this? Then it becomes something. So it has to be gold shoes with a purpose. It has to be flashy with a purpose. Paula and I earlier this week were talking about the verb resolved, and I, I really don't have anything much more to say about that other than you can be resigned to something. So there might be a few folks right now say, oh gosh, this whole experience based learning, I guess I gotta do it, you know. Or you can be resolved to do as much as you can and to believe in it as much as I think we all do. Same way with the enrollment stuff we were talking about at Academic Council. You can be resigned to saying, oh my gosh, the sky is falling, which it's not, okay? 
Or you can say, wow, we have opportunity. We believe in what we do. We have the right students in the classroom, which is what I've heard from every single one of you in the last few weeks. And we can help them even more. So I ask you, what can be your gold shoes? And the gold shoes in this case, when you know that it is part of a bigger thing with our VP of Extracurricular Activities, Director of Athletics, Megan smith Eggert. Um, and this was at a meeting we had last Friday, our pep rally where we had all 1,200 of our athletes at Arlington Heights. And you see, she wore those gold shoes. She wears them every year for this meeting only, I think. And really, just it was so cool. She had a kind of a scary uh, musical chairs with the coaches, though, that I'm telling you, we had the right coaches. They were going to kill each other. <laughs> that was really kind of cool. But uh, flashy with the purpose. So thank you for listening to my gold shoes analogy. I just wanted to say to you again, I appreciate you know, you're listening to me, you're working with us, with me for all these years. Uh, I'm really, really excited. And today, only maybe, I, I just, I'm just so thirsty, you know? It's like today may be even more sure that we're doing, that we're on the right path. Um, and really the sky's the limit for Rocky Mountain University. So, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Oh, I see.